Hi guys, it's Ms. Bollinger here. I am going to be reading the book, The Lemonade Club by Patricia Polacco. And if you remember, you will know that Patricia Polacco is one of my favorite authors. Um, the last book that we read, Mr. Lincoln's Way, was also by Patricia Polacco. I hope you enjoy the story. Tracy and Marilyn were best friends. They were inseparable at school and almost always went to each other's houses after school. Both of them were in Mrs. Weckelman's fifth grade class. How they loved Miss Weckelman. Everyone in class did. Miss Weckelman made their classroom seem almost like home. She put a lamp on her desk and she framed almost everyone's drawing and hung them on the walls. She had a rug right up in the front of the room next to her desk where she read to her class from a big old rocking chair. And there was the class guinea pig, Pinky, who squeaked whenever anyone walked by him. What everyone liked most about Miss Weckelman is that she made every kid in the classroom believe that he or she could be anything they wanted to be. If you dream it, then you can be it. Marilyn wanted to be a pianist. She took lessons every week and had a grand piano in her living room. Tracy loved to hear her practice. Tracy didn't know what she wanted to be really. She did know that it made her feel warm inside whenever she was helping someone. Almost every day, just as the last bell was about to ring, Miss Weckelman would point to a basket of fresh lemons that she always kept on her desk and say, and if life hands you a lemon or two today, and you all know how sour lemons are, everyone would make a face. Just add water and sugar, and what do you have? Then she'd pause, and the whole class would call out, lemonade! Tracy and Marilyn stayed after school one afternoon to help Miss Weichelman put up the career day posters. Miss Weichelman pinned up a picture of a doctor. Once, I thought I'd be a doctor. Why, I even completed my pre-med courses, but I discovered being a teacher was just as important to me. After all, doctors help your bodies grow up healthy and strong. Teachers help your minds grow wise and full of ideas, Miss Weichelman said thoughtfully. Soon, soon after, as Tracy and Marilyn were walking home, they heard voices behind them. Waddle, 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 one of the older girls sneered. Fatty, fatty, two by four, couldn't get through the classroom door, the other one chimed in. Don't listen to them, Tracy said as she pulled Marilyn along a little faster. The, old, the older girls hissed and whispered mean secrets, then laughed as loud as they could. Finally, those mean girls turned down another street. I would do just about anything to be thin, Marilyn cried. Tracy put her arm around Marilyn's shoulder. They didn't say much more for the rest of the way home. As weeks passed, school went on as usual, except Tracy noticed that Marilyn was losing weight. She was looking great. Even the mean girls didn't tease her anymore. Then one Wednesday, as the girls were planting flowers in Marilyn's front garden, Marilyn collapsed in a heap on the grass. I can't breathe, she gasped. I'm so tired. I don't even think I can get up. You haven't gone on one of those awful diets, have you, Marilyn? Because it isn't good for kids to starve themselves and go on diets. That's just it, Marilyn answered. I've lost all this weight without doing anything. Tracy looked worried. It just melted off, but I feel so tired and I'm always tired, Marilyn said weakly. I'm getting your mom. Tracy knew something was very wrong. Marilyn didn't come back to school from that day on. Tracy knew why. Marilyn's mom came over one night crying and told her mom everything. Then the, ne the very next day, Mrs. Weichelman had a terrible announcement to make to the class. About Marilyn, Miss Weichelman started. She looked so grim that everyone in that room knew that this was something very serious. Marilyn's family had asked me to inform all of you that Marilyn has cancer, leukemia. 
Everyone in the room gasped. Some of the kids cried. Tracy just looked at the floor and fought back her own tears. Ms. Weckelman quickly added, but there is a great deal of hope. Marilyn will undergo a series of treatments called chemotherapy. This treatment will eventually kill all the cancer cells in her body, but it will sometimes make her sick while it is fighting the cancer. The whole class just sat and stared for a time. Is she ever coming back to school? Danny Bridges called out. Yes, in a few weeks she will return, but I warn you, she will look quite different. These treatments will make her lose all of her hair. She will probably wear a wig or a scarf, but she won't have any hair, Miss Weckelman said softly. And there may be times that she will feel sick or very tired. Miss Weckelman suddenly lost all of the color in her face and quickly sat down. But Miss Weckelman, people die when they get cancer, don't they? One of the children blurted out. Miss Weckelman stared out the window for a moment, then collected herself. There's no doubt that some do not survive. Our Marilyn most certainly will, but she'll need all of us to help her through this. Tracy stared at the basket of lemons and thought to herself that no matter how much sugar was added, there wasn't going to be lemonade this time. As days passed, Tracy and Miss Wickelman were almost permanent fixtures at Marilyn's house. One day, shortly after her chemo began, Tracy walked in while Marilyn was brushing her hair. She was staring at her hairbrush. It was full of strands and clumps of her beautiful hair. My hair, it's falling out. Marilyn cried as she pulled the hair from the brush and tried to put it back on her head. I even made a wish on a star last night that I wouldn't lose my hair, Marilyn sobbed. From that day on, some days were good and some weren't for Marilyn. One day, Miss Weckelman came for a visit. Tracy was already there. It was one of Marilyn's not so good days. She had just come from the hospital and her arms were bruised from all the pokes she got that day. She was so weak, she could hardly sit up in bed. Nothing Tracy and Miss Weckelman did seemed to cheer her up. Look, Marilyn, Miss Weckelman bought you a CD of a piano concerto to listen to. Mozart, your favorite composer. Music. I don't care about music. I'm never going to be able to play the piano again with those sore arms, with these sore arms. I'm so sick of doctors and hospitals and needles. Oh, Marilyn, please smile. Smile just for me, Tracy pleaded. Marilyn cried even more. Smile? How do I smile? I feel so sick. No one knows how bad I feel. No one. Then she buried her head in her pillow. Miss Welcoman held Marilyn in her arms. Oh, sweet pea, I think I do. I think I know exactly how you feel, Miss Welcoman said softly. And then Miss Welcoman sat back and held Marilyn's face in her hands. Marilyn, you just have to get well so you can come to my wedding, Miss Welcoman beamed. Your wedding? Marilyn and Tracy both called out. When did you get engaged and to who? Marilyn smiled broadly for the first time in weeks. His name is Warren, and girls, this will have to be our secret for a while, but I want you both to be there. I want you both in yellow dresses, lemon yellow as bright as sunshine. We're going to make lemonade out of sour, bitter old lemons, aren't we? Miss Weckelman whispered. But what if I'm still bald? What then? Marilyn asked. Well, so what? What if you are? You'll still be one of the most beautiful girls there, Miss Weckelman reassured her. It was Monday morning, Miss Weckelman and Tracy and the whole class had a huge surprise for Marilyn's return to school. It had been planned that Marilyn be brought to class just after the starting bell so the kids could get their surprise ready. As Marilyn walked down the hall, she was gripping her mother's hand. She had on her best scarf. Tracy opened the door and greeted her. The whole class stood up. They were all wearing funny hats. As Marilyn entered, everyone cheered and clapped. There was a big sheet cake on Miss Weckelman's desk. Tracy took Marilyn's hand. Welcome back, Marilyn, she called out. Then she pulled off her funny hat. Everyone in class did. Everyone was bald. They had all shaved their heads. Marilyn's mother caught her breath and clapped her hand over her mouth. 
Marilyn walked up and down each aisle, looking intently into the face of each of her classmates. When she passed the last desk, she lowered her eyes and slowly pulled off her own scarf and held it in her hands. She felt a warm hand softly caress her hairless head. It was Miss Weckleman. Then everyone gasped, look. Miss Weckleman slowly pulled off her own brightly colored scarf. She too had no hair. Then there was a loud cheer. The music was turned on, ice cream and cake dished out, and the celebration began. But Miss Weckleman seemed distracted. She didn't seem as cheerful as usual. With each treatment, the doctor said Marilyn's cancer was disappearing. Marilyn finally completed her last round of chemo. Her hair started growing back right away. It was fuzzy and orange at first, but soon it looked just like it had before, except it was curly and shorter. She and Tracy met after school under the shady elm with Miss Weckleman every week. They had become very close. They called themselves the Lemonade Club. Miss Weckleman read poems. Sometimes she cried. She said it was because the words are so beautiful. They talked about everything. And of course, they loved hearing about plans for Miss Weckleman's wedding. Soon the entire class returned to a normal routine. Everyone's hair was growing back. But one day, Bernie Carlisle called out, hey, Miss Weckleman, how come you're still wearing your scarf? Ain't you got no hair under there? Although Miss Weckleman knew he was kidding, she didn't laugh. She tugged at her scarf and looked out the window. Something seemed wrong. Tracy passed a note to Miss Weckleman that read, emergency meeting of the Lemonade Club today, after school, under the elm. Later that day, Tracy and Marilyn sat under the shade of the old elm tree. It was Marilyn who spoke up. You have it too, don't you, Miss Weckleman, for real? That's why you said you knew exactly how I felt. Miss Weckleman couldn't seem to speak, and when she finally did, her eyes filled with tears. I have breast cancer, girls, she said, almost in a whisper. So you're going to fight this, aren't you? Marilyn demanded. Yes, I'm almost finished with chemo, Miss Weckleman said as her voice trailed off. Will that get rid of it? Tracy asked. No, I'll have to have surgery eventually, Miss Weckleman answered. Surgery? I didn't have surgery, Marilyn said. You had a cancer in a very different way than I do. So, so you're going to be flat chested like us, right? Tracy chirped. Way to go, Miss Weckleman, she added, giving a thumbs up. Fashion models are flat-chested, and they are considered the most beautiful women on earth, Marilyn chimed in. Except for bride, said Tracy. Then they all laughed. Miss Weckleman seemed deep in thought. I don't know what I would do without you two, Miss Weckleman sighed as she lay back on the grass and looked at the clouds. Both of you have taught me so much and affected my life. Because of you, I have thought again about being a doctor. I applied to Stanford Medical School. I wanted to help children just like you, Marilyn, but since I started the treatments, I think I've lost my courage, Miss Weckleman's voice drifted off. Hey, Marilyn bellowed, you aren't going to let something like cancer stomp on your dreams, are you? You are always teaching us to keep our dreams, no matter what, Tracy added. If you can dream it, you can be it, the three of them said together. You'll make a wonderful doctor, Tracy whispered, and Warren loves you. What more could you want? Marilyn said. Miss Weckleman took a lemon out of her basket. Well then, girls, to the lemonade club, she said triumphantly. To the lemonade club, Tracy and Marilyn echoed. It was an especially sunny day. People were gathered in the church. Even though it had been five years since they had been Miss Weckleman's students, almost the whole classroom then was sitting together. The music was playing softly. It was one of Miss Weckleman's favorite hymns. The flowers were so beautiful. Everyone there was thinking about Miss Weckleman. Suddenly, the congregation sprang to its feet. The music boomed a joyous trumpet voluntary, and there standing in their lemon yellow gowns were Tracy and Marilyn. They beamed as they marched down the aisle to join the groom at the front of the church. Then, Everyone turned and looked at Cynthia Weckleman appeared. 
Tracy and Marilyn were right. She was a beautiful bride. She glowed as she floated like a cloud down the aisle. Dr. Cynthia Weckelman became the wife of Dr. Warren Gish on this glorious day, and they were all there together to celebrate it. A sweet lemonade indeed. And boys and girls, I wanted to share this picture with you because what Patricia Polacco writes is that she knows that these three friends, Tracy, Marilyn, and Miss Buckelman, they still keep in touch to this very day. And Tracy went on to study in the medical field, inspired by Miss Buckelman, and Marilyn became a teacher who was deeply loved, just like Miss Buckelman always was. Marilyn had three sons and still plays the piano. Cynthia and Warren live in Missouri, where Cynthia teaches medical studies, and Warren is a tireless researcher dedicated to find cures for diseases. And Patricia Palaka says, I know this to be true because Tracy is my daughter and Marilyn is one of her best friends. And Cynthia is indeed my daughter's former teacher who went on to become a doctor after battling cancer and winning. She's very dear to my entire family where we look to her and her example to find our own courage, inspiration, and most of all, hope. So boys and girls, that's one of the things about Patricia Polacco. She writes a lot of stories that have really happened to her in, in her life. And this is another example of that, the Lemonade Club.